In our previous lecture, we understood the recursive algorithm of Towers of Hanoi. We know the recursive algorithm is capable enough to solve the problem of Towers of Hanoi, that is to transfer the disks from one peg to the other. Now in this presentation, we will implement that algorithm. We will consider a simple example to properly understand how the algorithm works. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see the topics of this lecture. There is only one topic of this lecture and the name of the topic is Towers of Hanoi Implementation. Let's get started and let's understand how the algorithm works by considering a simple example. Here is the algorithm we saw in the last lecture and understood as well. Now, we will try to understand the working of this algorithm in a proper way by considering n as 3. This means, the problem is to transfer 3 disks from peg A to peg B via peg C. So, understand this, the source peg is A, the destination peg is B and the intermediate peg is C. So, we want to transfer 3 disks from peg A to peg B via peg C. This is the problem. So, we know the initial call is TOH of ABC3. We are going to draw the recursive tree to understand the working of this algorithm and to understand whether we are getting the correct moves or not. For this, it is important to draw the recursive tree of this algorithm. You will understand this in a moment. What do I mean by this? The first call is TOH of ABC3. This is the problem we want to solve. We learned this already that we can recursively solve this problem by following this algorithm. We first need to check the base case. Is n equal to 1? No, we can observe that n is not 1, it is equal to 3. Therefore, the base case is not satisfied. Hence, we need to move to the recursive case. This means we now need to execute the else block. In this else block, the first statement needs to be executed. After completion of the statement only, we can go to the next statement. According to the statement, we need to call TOH of A, C, B, N minus 1. Now understand what is the meaning of this. As I have mentioned, the first character here indicates the source peg. The second character indicates the destination peg. And the third character is indicating the intermediate peg. Similarly, here also, the source peg is A, the destination peg is C and the intermediate peg is B. So, there is this change. Now, we need to transfer two disks from peg A to peg C via peg B. So, the control needs to shift from TOH of A, B, C, 3 to TOH of A, C, B, 2. Understand that value of n is 3. Therefore, here we will get 2. That is why we are within TOH of A, C, B, 2. Now, we are within this function. We are not within TOH of A, B, C, 3. The problem has been reduced to this problem. We now need to transfer two disks from peg A to peg C via peg B. This means B has been replaced by C, C has been replaced by B. In place of N, we have value 2 and A remains as it is. So, everywhere in this algorithm, we need to replace B by C and C by B. This is what we need to understand. Now, let's evaluate this algorithm for this specific function call. We say a function or an algorithm both are one and the same. Now, let's evaluate the base case. Can we say this base case is satisfied? No, not yet. We can observe that the value of n is 2 and 2 is not equal to 1. Therefore, the base case is not satisfied. Hence, we need to move to the recursive case which is this else block. And within this else block, we first need to resolve the first statement, which is the function call. Here we are calling TOH of A, C, B, N minus 1. 
Now understand this, that we are within TOH of A, C, B, 2. In place of N, we have 2. B has been replaced by C and C has been replaced by B. So here also we need to replace C by B and B by C. So this means we are transferring the control from TOH of A, C, B, 2 to TOH of A, B, C, 1. This is important to understand. This time, the source peg is A, the destination peg is B, the intermediate peg is C and we just need to transfer one disk from peg A to peg B via peg C. So right now, we can say we are within this function call and because N is 1, the base case is satisfied. And as the base case is satisfied, we need to move one disk from A to B. I have not written the exact statement here. Move A to B means move one disk from A to B because the value of N is 1. So we are just left with one disk within A and we need to move that disk from A to B. So this is the move we can write at this point. A to B. This indicates that we need to move one disk from peg A to peg B. I hope this idea is clear. At this point, the base case is satisfied. This means this move needs to be executed. After completion of this move, we now need to get back to the caller of this function. From TOH of A, B, C, 1, we now need to shift to TOH of A, C, B, 2. This means we are back to the place where we left off. We left off at this particular place. After this statement, we have this statement. Move A to B. But understand, in place of B, we must have C because we are within this function. In place of B, we have C. So, the move is actually A to C for this function call. Hence, at this point, this is the move we have. The first move that we have obtained is A to B. Then after this, we have obtained this move A to C. We just need to keep track of these moves. This is important. That's why I'm writing them below the function calls. And the order is very important. We got this first and then this. This means the first move is A to B and the second move is A to C. Now after this, we need to execute this statement. As we are done with this statement, we need to execute this statement. This means we again need to call the Towers of Hanoi function, this TOH function. And to this TOH function, we are passing C, B, A and N-1. Now what does this mean? This means we need to transfer N-1 disks from C to B via A. What is the value of N here? The value of N is 2. So, this needs to be replaced by 1 as 2 minus 1 is 1. And we know in place of C, we have B. And in place of B, we have C. So, we need to replace C by B and B by C. This means we are calling TOH of B, C, A, 1. So, the control needs to shift from TOH of A, C, B, 2 to TOH of B, C, A, 1. This is the specific function we are within. Or we can say we are inside this specific algorithm where the source peg is B, the destination peg is C and the intermediate peg is A and the value of N is 1. This means the base case is satisfied. But in place of A, we now have B and in place of B, we now have C. So, A needs to be replaced by B and B needs to be replaced by C. So, the move will be B to C. I hope this idea is clear. And from this function also, you can see this. As this is the source peg and this is the destination peg, definitely the move must be B to C. Here also, you can observe the move is A to B. Here, the move is A to C. So, in the similar way, we can say in this function call, the move is B to C. Now we got three moves, A to B, A to C, B to C, in the same order. Now we need to get back to this function call. Understand this, at this point we are done with all the function calls. Hence we need to shift the control from this function call to this function call. 
Now we know this is the place where we left off at this particular function. This is what we need to remember. At this point, we can observe the value of n is 3. We want to shift all the disks from A to B via C. We are done with the first function call here. Now we need to perform this operation. That is, move A to B. And this means we need to move one disk from A to B. And this is true as well. We are within TOH of A, B, C, 3. This means we need to move one disk from A to B. Now, the next statement is TOH of C, B, A, N minus 1. We know the control needs to shift from TOH of A, B, C, 3 to TOH of C, B, A, 2. Now, we are within this function call. The source peg is C, the destination peg is B and the intermediate peg is A. We need to transfer two disks from C to B via A. This means A is replaced by C, B remains B and C is replaced by A. So, everywhere A must be replaced by C and C must be replaced by A. This is what we need to remember. Now, within this function call, we know the value of n is 2. This means the base case is not satisfied. Hence, we need to move to the recursive case. In this recursive case, we need to call TOH of A, C, B, N minus 1. But understand this, that A needs to be replaced by C and C needs to be replaced by A. So, we need to transfer the control from TOH of C, B, A, 2 to TOH of C, A, B, 1. A has been replaced by C and C has been replaced by A. That is why we are getting this function call. And the value of n is 1 at this point. This means the base case is satisfied and we can observe in place of A, we now have C and in place of B, we now have A. So, the move is clear. The move is from C to A. So, this is the move we are getting here. And this is the fourth move we are getting. The first move was A to B, second A to C, third B to C, fourth A to B and fifth one is C to A. Now we are done with this move. We need to get back to the place where we left off. This means we need to get back to the caller of this function, which is this function, TOH of C B A 2. Now we know that this statement is executed. We need to execute this second statement, which is move A to B. At this point, we can observe A is C and C is A. So, here we have C in place of A and the move is C to B. After this, we need to execute this statement, that is TOH of C, B, A, N minus 1. So, from TOH of C, B, A, 2, we need to call TOH of a, B, C, 1. Why am I saying this? We know in place of A, we have C and in place of C, we have A. So, here also, in place of C, we must have A and in place of A, we must have C. That is why we are getting this function call TOH of A, B, C, 1. Now, within this function call, we know the base case is satisfied. Hence, we need to perform this move. That is, a to B. So, this must be the move. A to B. This is the last move so obtained. And at this point, we are done with this function call. We are done with this function call also. And we are done with this function call as well. We are done with all the function calls. And we have obtained all the moves as well. The order is this. We got these moves. A to B. A to C. B to C. A to B. C to A, C to B, then A to B. These are all the moves and there are a total of 7 moves. We learned this as well that for 3 disks, there will be 7 moves. And we got 7 only, so it makes sense. Now we need to verify whether we are getting these moves in correct order or not and whether we are getting the correct moves or not. So let's verify this now. Here we have three pegs, A, B and C. In peg A, we have three disks and we need to move these disks from A to B. Now, we are going to perform these moves one by one. 
First, we need to transfer one disk from A to B. So, let's do this. The topmost disk needs to be transferred from A to B. After this, we need to perform this move, that is A to C. Let's move this disk from A to C. Now, the next step is to move one disk from B to C. So, this disk needs to be moved from B to C. Okay, at this point, we have the top two disks in peg C. Now, after this, we need to perform this move A to B. We can see there is only one disk left within peg A. We need to transfer this disk to B. Now, let's perform the specific move C to A. We now need to transfer this disk from C to A. Then, we need to transfer this disk from C to B. And finally, we need to transfer this disk from A to B. Great! We now have all our disks placed within peg B and in the correct order as well. So, this clearly verifies that all the moves which we have obtained in this order is correct. So, the algorithm which we have written in the previous lecture is working correctly. This is the verification of the algorithm. We learned how the algorithm works with the help of this example, that is, transferring three disks from peg A to peg B. So, we can say that we are done with this topic and we can also say that we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.